Hey guys, it's Russ with Modern Carpet Pill. I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about pressure washer tips, how they correlate to uh, your gun on your pressure washer, but then I'm going to break it down into how they apply to using a surface cleaner. All right, so to just get some simple stuff out of the way, we have two different types of tips that we're going to be dealing with as pressure washers. All right, you've got your quick connect. These are what's going to come in the box with your pressure washer, whether you're buying it from Home Depot or you're buying a commercial rig from a, from a, uh, a dealer. Um, you're going to have your, your white, your green, your yellow, and your reds. All right, for your reds, take them, throw them in the trash. They're no good for anything. All they're going to do is cause damage. So you've got your quick connects, and then you've got what's known as your MEGs or your MEGs. All right, and those are just threaded. Those are what's going to go under the bottom on the rotary bar of your surface cleaners. But they're also going to screw into the end of certain types of uh, pressure washing guns, some of the dual ones where you can adjust the pressure with the handle. On the side of your tips, on all of the sides of your tips, they're going to have a set of numbers. All right? Those numbers correlate to the fan angle or the spray angle all right? and then the gallons per minute that that tip is rated for. Now the thing about the gallons per minute that a tip is rated for, what you need to do before you buy your tips is go on the internet, <clears throat> go to Google, type in pressure washing tip chart. All right, and that's going to give you this big chart. It's going to give you gallons per minute, PSI, and then uh, spray angle. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to say, I want a 40 degree spray angle and I want to have 2000 PSI. So then you just need to go and you need to pick the size of the tip that correlates with that. You can buy or replace your tips as needed. One thing to keep in mind about pressure washers and your unloaders is that your pressure washer only creates flow, all right? Your pump itself, sorry, your pump itself only creates flow, okay? If you lay your hose out on the driveway with no guns, no tips, no valves closed, nothing, just an, just an open hose, and you run your pressure washer at full throttle, all right, you are not going to have 3,000 or even 3,500 PSI. You maybe have 40 to 50, all right? But you're just going to have 4 gallons a minute or 6 gallons a minute or 8 Whatever your pump is designed to deliver, if you have a 3,500 PSI at 8 gallon a minute or 4 gallon a minute pump, you're going to have that 4 gallons a minute or 8 gallons a minute coming out of the end of that hose. The only reason you're gaining that 40 PSI is from the hose itself. Okay, Those fittings within that hose, uh, those are causing restrictions. Your unloader is where your PSI rating for your pressure washer comes into play. If your pressure washer is rated for 3,000 or 3,500 PSI, that is what that unloader is rated to relieve at. All it's going to do is when you start adding restrictions, say you close a valve on the end of your pressure washer or you add a gun and a tip, that pressure is going to build up in that hose because you have stopped or restricted that flow. So when that flow finally backs all the way up to your pump and fills your entire system with that hydrostatic pressure, your unloader is going to start relieving at 3,500 and some change. It's just going to relieve back to the inlet of your pump or it's going to relieve to your buffer tank, however you have your rig set up. Most of your off-the-shelf, out-of-the-box, uh, like Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart-type pressure washers, they're just internal relief. They're just going to keep cycling that water back around to the inlet. The pump's going to get a little hot, um, but that's the way they're designed to operate. They're not designed to last hundreds of hundreds, if not thousands of hours. That's just the way it is. You pay for what you get in this market. <clears throat> so going back to the spray angle on our tips, you can have 40s, 25s, and 15s. These are the numbers that you're going to see on the sides of your tips. All right? You might have zero degree tips. You might have fives or 10 degree tips. But for most of your out-of-the-box type uh, pressure washer tips, you're going to see your 15s, your 25s, and your 40s. All right, that's going to be the most common. Now, for this, most of your all your pressure washer tips that come with your unit, they're going to be rated for the gallons per minute out of that one tip on the end of your gun that's going to provide the pressure that your rig is built for. So if I had a rig that was meant for 3,500 psi and I'm running 4004 tips, that's fine. If I step that up and I change that to a 4005, I've now made a, that orifice in the end of that tip, I've made it larger. I've made it capable of handling five gallons per minute. But now, because I have less of a restriction, I may only get 
say if it's a 3500 PSI pressure washer, I might only get 2900 out of it or 3100. It just depends on the length of the hose and a couple other factors that you just, they're going to be specific for your unit. <clears throat> Same thing for the 25s, okay? If you've got a 25 degree tip, 25040, 15040, all right? That's all those numbers mean. The first two numbers are your spray angle. The last two are going to be your orifice size. Now, any, if you ever have a number in the center here, like say I have 4104, uh, that's really not going to happen. It would most likely be a 4500, okay, because most of these tips are going to go from 1 to 60 gallons a minute, all right? That's about the, the biggest tip size that you're going to find in this industry, and that's a massive pressure washer if you're moving 60 gallons a minute. <clears throat> Those are most likely going to be used in your uh, blasting or your uh, massive type, uh, type industrial applications. So we've got the first two numbers, which are the spray angle. The last two are going to be the gallons per minute that that tip is rated for, giving a set PSI on a chart that your specific pressure washer was built for. When it comes to surface cleaners, you have a rotary bar underneath that housing and it uses two tips, one on each side, and those rotate, and that is what cleans your concrete. So in order to get, say I was getting 3,500 PSI out of this 4004, in order to get that same 3,500 PSI, if I'm using two tips now, I have to half, in theory, I have to half this orifice size. Most likely I'm going to go with a 4020 or a 4025. Now you're going to have to play around with it according to that chart in order to get exactly 3,500 PSI. For me, I run an 8 gallon a minute pressure washer. Uh, the surface cleaner I have is a 2 bar, uh, one tip on each side. So I run 40.050s zeros, and that's because I don't want 3,500 PSI coming out of that surface cleaner onto my concrete. I want to break that down and I want to run theoretically anywhere from 2,500 to 2,700. So I go with a larger orifice size, and that's going to reduce the restriction and reduce my pressure that's actually hitting my pavement. Now when it comes to the, the pressure that's actually hitting your pavement, there's a few other factors that come into play. One is your spray angle. The second one is obviously how many gallons a minute you're putting onto that concrete, and the orifice that you're trying to put that water through is going to generate that pressure. But the second one is your, your rotary bar height. Most of our surface cleaners, I use a GP Hammerhead. I know there's a few other ones on the market that within this housing, okay, these are, are representing this zigzag line is just representing the bristles that my unit floats on. My swivel is adjustable where I can raise or lower the height of that rotary bar. Now, it might sound cool to drop it all the way down and say, man, I want to get that tip as close to the concrete as possible. But then you have to really, really think about your spray angle that you're dealing with in the first place. If I've got a 40 degree angle, and these lines, these angles that I've drawn are true, this line going across each one of them represents the pavement. All right, all of these tips are placed one inch above the concrete. So representing my rotary bar inside my surface cleaner, only having one inch to spray water before it actually starts cleaning my concrete. That's what these are representing. Without breaking it down into decimal places, essentially at one inch of ride height, for my rotary bar, I'm going to have a spray pattern actually hitting my concrete of one inch with a 40 degree nozzle, three quarters of an inch with a 25 degree nozzle, and a half inch wide at a 15 degree nozzle. <clears throat> so why is that ride height important? Well, if one inch, I'm only dealing with a half inch wide spray pattern, and I'm running say 3000 or 3500 PSI through that. That is a lot of pressure in a very, very small area that is hitting that concrete. So what you'll notice if you've ever been to a restaurant or you've seen a driveway that was just done by, uh, by somebody who didn't really know how to set up their equipment properly, what you'll see is a nice circular swirl pattern that goes all the way across the drive, that goes all the way across the concrete. All right, it's just going to look kind of like this. All right, and that's where they push that surface cleaner too fast. And those nozzles weren't able to clean the dead space in between the concrete because they're moving too fast. 
Most of our surface cleaners are designed to spin at 2,000 RPMs. All right, that's regardless of the flow that you're putting through them. Now, reducing uh, your pressure by increasing the orifice size that you're dealing with in your tip will slow or speed up that, speed, that RPMs. But a good baseline is 2,000. Why is this important? Well, if I'm moving too fast and my rotary bar is too close to my concrete, and I'm using a 15 degree spray tip, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna leave swirl marks. I'm gonna burn that concrete. I'm gonna take that top level, top layer of concrete off that makes it nice and smooth. Basically, you're just gonna tear that right off. That's permanent. You can never get rid of that unless you grind that concrete out. At the same time, what I do on my unit is I run 4005s. That's gonna let me get about 25 to 2700 PSI to the concrete. All right, I run a ride height of one inch. <clears throat> so at one inch high, I'm getting a spray pattern to my concrete that is one inch wide. That's per nozzle. So essentially I'm cleaning two, two inches of concrete every time this bar runs around, if I'm constantly moving forward. Now moving too slow isn't necessarily a problem using 40 degree tips because my spray pattern is so wide. The problem is that at a certain point, if you run too slow, now you're sacrificing efficiency for the sake of making the concrete look good, even though you could move twice as fast and it would still be clean. So you gotta figure out what is your unit designed to do? How are you gonna set it up to make it do what you wanna do? And secondly, you have to understand if you're running at 2000 RPMs, what spray angle do you need to run? What ride heights do you need to run? in order to get the results that you want without causing damage to your customer's property. <clears throat> Talking about moving too fast and getting swirl marks because you're not cleaning the concrete efficiently, what happens if you move too slow? Well, depending on your tip, if you're using 15 degree tips, if you're moving too slow, even 40 degree tips if they're too low, all right, but that really just depends on your pressure, okay? Honestly, anything over 3,000 PSI through a surface cleaner, you're going to cause damage. There's no need for it. If you can't clean it with less than, I would say, anywhere from the 2,200 to 3,000 range, if you can't clean it with that, you need to start supplementing in with some chemicals to try to loosen that sediment and loosen that dirt that is causing you your issues. Anything over 3,500, in my professional opinion, is just going to cause damage. You're asking for trouble because you're going to find soft concrete at some point in time. So drop your pressure down, supplement with chemicals, okay? Degreasers, bleach, whatever it is, um, hydroxides, you know, however it is that you want to go, what, you know, off-the-shelf cleaning products, or you want to design and make your own, play around with it and figure out what it is that you want to do. But moving too fast, you'll get swirl marks because you're not cleaning your concrete efficiently. Moving too slow now you're starting to sacrifice time and efficiency and basically you're just wasting water for the sake of trying to make the concrete look clean when you could move twice as fast and it would still be clean. For instance, <clears throat> if I have a surface cleaner that spins at 2000 RPMs, I'm running 8 gallons a minute. So let's just say that I clean a swath of concrete. All right, This is just one pass. This is the exact width of my surface cleaner, okay? I just push it down 10 feet of concrete one time. If I take a full minute to do that, in theory, I'm using eight gallons of water to clean one, one uh, path 10 feet long. My rotary bar has gone around 2,000 times. Now, 10 feet, there's 120 inches in 10 feet. <clears throat> if I take 2,000 RPMs, and divide it down over the course of that minute by those 120 inches, it comes down to 16, all right? So in theory, if I had one tip, I would have cleaned this concrete 16 times in that one pass. But I have a rotary bar that has two tips. So mathematically, I have cleaned this one path of concrete 32 times with eight gallons of water. And in one minute, I've only moved 10 feet. So that's why it's important to figure out why you cannot move certain speed because you will not clean the concrete effectively and you'll have stripes and swirl marks. But at the same time, you need to figure out how fast you can move 
in order to be efficient with the equipment that you have. All right? More gallons per minute does not necessarily mean that you're going to be faster or more efficient. If you don't take the time to figure out how to set your equipment up properly, it doesn't matter anyways. All right? Learning your craft and learning how your equipment works is going to save you more money, make you more money, save you more time, and give you more time to find new jobs than any other trick or gimmick in the book that you might find. Okay, Everybody's got the nice new shiny thing that they want to sell you. Just figuring out the basics and learning how to set up your equipment is going to be more beneficial to you as a new business owner than any new shiny uh, product that you can get your hands on. So it's just a little bit about surface cleaners, a little bit about tips. Um, if you got any questions, hit me up in the comments down below. I'll answer them. I'll, uh, I'll direct message you back or I'll just post it right there as a reply if it's something that's going to be super common. Uh, but however, however you want to ask or however you want to do it, uh, it's up to you. But like, subscribe. Uh, I'm going to keep the videos coming if you guys have any things you want to see. Any explanations as to how I do it, let me know. Thanks for your time.